So yeah, yes. yeah it's working. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with uh, pattern recognition, machine learning. Everybody that has taken one of these courses uh, know about back propagation, backward propagation. But for some of you who didn't, just a few uh, remarks on back backward propagation. As Jordi has pointed uh, out here, uh, for the half of the group, uh, when you will program back propagation, you will not need to know much about it, about it, but it's good to to have some feeling of the parameters of the back propagation algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> I say that I can do myself. No. Okay. Uh, so let's first, uh, before uh, explaining back propagation, see where we are. Uh, Eva has uh, talked about uh, when you train for classifying, uh, if you have uh, data that is annotated, annotated, that means that you know which kind of, uh, which class that data belongs, uh, that means that you, that you have, uh, you can train uh, knowing the result of for that data, okay? When you have data that you know the, the class, that means that you have, uh, you, you do a supervised learning, okay? If you don't know uh, what class is your data, then it's unsupervised. But you can have both models, okay? So, um, when you have a, uh, when your training you is supervised, that means you know the, the you have uh, some of the data, you know the class. Uh, oops, you can use these uh, algorithms or this learning that is called supervised. Then it's when you use this algorithm that is called back propagation, um, together mostly with uh, what is a stochastic gradient descent. We'll talk about that in a moment. This is good when you have a lot of labeled data. That means that you know the class of your data, okay? Uh, this is also a, a generic classification, but uh, when you have a lot of uh, data that is not labeled, sometimes you use what is uh, uh, called unsupervised learning. That means that the system tries to uh, uh, train itself using some, some methods. Uh, the the well-known uh, methods are the autoencoders and the restricted both ma machines. So, oops, sorry. So, uh, so what you do uh, mainly is to train uh, the whole network, but only uh, train with your, your data that you have labeled, only the classifier. That means the last step of your network. Um, sometimes you, you can also not only uh, train every layer in an unsupervised uh, way, but you can do this unsupervised uh, learning and then do back propagation uh, uh, to the whole network. You will see what back propagation means and then maybe you can come back here and, and try to understand, okay? But uh, the difference between these two ways of learning is that you can only train the last step, which is the classifier, or you can initialize with this unsupervised method and then back propagate and, uh, let's say, train uh, the whole network that has a good initialization. Okay, so uh, just to remember the the notation we have uh, set uh, one hour before. Uh, remember that we have uh, this uh, linear uh, input to do every one of, of your neurons. Uh, and then you have this hidden activation, which is the nonlinear part. The first, let's say, if we use this notation <coughs> H, that is the output of every one of the hidden layers, what is H of the first H is the input, okay? And for the last uh, activation, uh, usually you, you will see this notation that it's an, an O letter, and uh, one of the possible uh, activations at the last layer is the softmax, okay? I told you that this is kind of a probability that your uh, data belongs to one of these uh, classes, 
And, and this function that we have just mentioned, this, uh, oops, this output function at the end of, of your network, uh, gives you a score uh, of, uh, let's say, that uh, for each one of the classes. You will like that your, the, the true class gives you a one, and the rest of the classes gives you a zero as a score. But obviously, uh, you need to work a little bit before you, you come. You, you will never, I mean, this will be the ideal uh, output of your scores. But you have, to, you have to train very well your network and go to that uh, goal, which is uh, that your network uh, gives you the, the true class, OK? So from here, from this output uh, score, you define a loss function. And you will try to, to minimize the, this loss function that gives you the, let's say, the best scores. Mm? And the way to go from, from this loss function to the, to, to, to that minimizes this loss function that gives you the scores that you want, it's the, the optimization step. Okay, so let's see what we have. As you will see, while you train your uh, network, you always do uh, first what is called a forward pass. Uh, let's say you have some, some of your uh, weights are initialized or you have been training for a while and you, you have some values of your weights. Also, I didn't put here the bias, but you also have the bias. And so let's, let's say that you have this uh, initialization or you are in some point of your training and you compute from your input your output, eh? going from every one of these steps. So this is called your forward, a forward pass, okay? And also, from your labeled data, you know uh, which class your uh, input belongs. Eh? This is uh, uh, your, I mean, it's this vector is saying that your, uh, your class is this K class, okay? You would like the output uh, to be like that. You will, you will work uh, towards this goal, okay? As I said, uh, with softmax, you have uh, this uh, output at the network that looks like a probability. Uh, and you can define many, many functions, uh, many, many losses. It will depend on, on your application, but uh, this, uh, this is the standard one, okay? The standard one is the negative log likelihood, which, uh, which, uh, which is this function, logarithm of, these, uh, of your probability multiplied by, by, the, by, by your ideal uh, output, okay? Um, okay, so you will try to minimize, minimize this uh, loss function uh, with uh, respect to all your weights, weights and bias, okay? <laughs> We will talk maybe, I don't know, it's tomorrow, we talk about regularization, but sometimes uh, there are many ways to regularize, but one way is to add to your loss function uh, one, let's say, one term which accounts for the value of the wa your weights. You don't want all your values to, for example, let's say only one value has a huge value and the rest is zero. You want to use all your parameters. So this uh, term, what makes is to, okay, let's distribute, the, you, have, you want to have low values, but uh, as, many, as many of these weights should be different than zero and not so high, okay? So this is uh, one way to regularize and control a little bit the, uh, the way you, you will update uh, your weights. Okay, this is the forward pass and then we have to go back, we know the answer that we would like, go back and try to update these uh, weights so you, get, you can go to this minimum that will give you a maximum score at what you want. So let's, uh, this uh, is from Kevin, it's like from Kevin. Uh, so you need to find these parameters, the weights and the biases that minimize the loss function. One way to do it is you have a loss function, imagine a, a Gaussian in 2D, and you want to go to the minimum of, of this Gaussian. One way to do it is to use the gradient 
and uh, go through the gradient to that minimum, okay? Um, we'll talk also later about this mini batch uh, uh, gradient descent. I will tell you later. If not, you remember me and recall me, and I will say what is mini batch uh, gradient descent. Uh, so what you do obviously is to you, co you compute the, the gradients uh, of this loss function with respect to these weights that you want to, to obtain. As you will see, you can do this uh, layer by layer. So this is an advantage of this algorithm, of, of the backpropagation algorithm, that you don't need to minimize the whole network, but you can go uh, step by step, step by step, and the only thing you need from from the layers that you have uh, before is the error, okay? So you get the error from the, from the layer that, it, that it's uh, previous, and then with your gradients, you update uh, each layer. You will see now in, in uh, graphically what I mean, okay? And then you, you do that through the whole network, layer by layer. So let's see this, this uh, graph here that tries to, to um, I mean, we put in, in equations and, and graphically this, this backward uh, alg uh, algorithm. This is what is called the backward path. So I have computed my output, okay? And uh, I have my loss, okay? So wha first what I do is to compute uh, the, the error that I get in this step, okay? So this is the partial derivative of L. Uh, of L uh, given, well, given uh, this, uh, what I have before the, the, non, the nonlinear function. But obviously to get this error, you have to compute uh, the derivative of L with respect to H and the derivative of H with respect to A, okay? And this gives you, uh, give you the error. This is a, a value that you can obtain because uh, you have, uh, Analytical functions for uh, one advantage of this type of uh, networks is that you can uh, describe the analytical function and obtain the, the, the derivative and then the value. Huh? So you compute here the error. So you, you obtain this, you can obtain the derivative or your activation function too. So once you have the error, oh, this error will uh, uh, let you compute this uh, actually what you wanted, no? It's the, to minimize the loss function in function of the, of the weights. Uh, um, I mean, since we don't have much time, I, 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 I will tell you that you go through these equations, but you will see they are, I mean, you can follow them, okay? So to obtain this, you do the partial derivative over this A of K, and then A of K, uh, partial derivative of, with respect to, to these weights. So this gives you uh, this part of here, the H of K. Remember that uh, one part of the equation is the multiplication of W by HK. So you obtain here HK, okay? And then you have this partial derivative. But this partial derivative is nothing else than what you have computed in the previous step, okay? So you can, you can get the values in this way. Uh, then you have to compute the error that you will provide it to the next step. It's a little bit different bit, uh, than the last step, but it has, it has the same similar procedure. procedure. You, obtain the, you want to get the partial derivative of L respect to this a, the following one, which is A3 here. So you do it, uh, oh, here there is something that I may, may have to correct, sorry. Um, anyway, I will correct it. <laughs> the, so this is a derivative of L with respect to AK plus one, and then you have these uh, three partial derivatives that, uh, that will give you uh, the next error function. So the first one will be that is that a uh, mm, is this step here is the weights here you have well partial derivative of l with respect to ak plus one and then you have this that it's also the activation function 
So at the end you obtain this error. Okay, so this is in function of your weights, your previous error, and the derivative or your activation function. Five minutes, okay. <laughs> well, uh, I don't have many, many more slices, but I wanted you to understand the process. And I guess if you have understand this slide, then you know what is back propagation, okay. Uh, actually, this is the last slide. So, um, what do you do for uh, in every step? Is you update your weight. So, with the here, you have obtained the oops. You have obtained this. There, oops, it's very small. <laughs> Let's see. You have obtained this uh, partial derivative, and you go here, and you update your weights. Uh, well, this uh, value here is called the learning rate. I will also put it here because I forget to put nu is the learning rate. And it's one of the, what we call hyperparameters. It's not like W or of the bias. It's a parameter that you use for the whole network, okay? And you can also, uh, okay, uh, when you go through your minima, there is one way to also control the way you go to that minima uh, because uh, when you go step by step, you will have like very high jumps when you go to the minima. One way to control this is by a procedure which is uh, the momentum. In a way, you have, uh, uh, you keep some knowledge of what happened in the previous step, okay? And you consider the previous step plus your update. And you, you have, you have uh, into account what happened in the previous steps, okay? So that's the momentum. And the regularization that we have done before, huh? to control that you want uh, not one of the neurons to have all the weight, but to, uh, let's say, that all the weights contribute to your, to your output. And this gives better results. And uh, just uh, what I mentioned before about the mini batches is that when you train, you, you don't train with one image. You have, imagine, a, a large uh, data set. You perhaps take 128 image, 256 image, and this is called the size of the mini batch. And then in here, you average the weight, the, I mean, this gradient that you have obtained for your uh, 256 uh, images that were in that mini batch. It's also, the size of the mini batch is also uh, an hyperparameter. And I encourage you to go to this course of, uh, of uh, Stanford, where all what that we have seen now, it's done with example, with numbers, with uh, some partial derivatives that will help you understand better this backward propagation. And you will see that this works, and uh, it's, I think, everybody uses back propagation in, in deep learning, okay? Yes. Like when is the better? Like when is the better? Do you use like gradient descent with momentum and with auto regularization? What's the difference? Well, when uh, regularization, they will explain it to you. I think tomorrow. It's a way that you generalize more your uh, your data. Otherwise. When you minimize, you, uh, you think too much on your examples. You need to generalize so when a new example comes, uh, this works good. Otherwise, if you don't have this regularization term, uh, it, adapts that it adapts to your solution, but it's not good for when you have test data, new input data, okay? Um, and the momentum uh, helps you to go faster to your minima. To, your, to, to minimize the loss, okay? Uh, this is one parameter that the people adjust this, but uh, it's very typical to use this value, okay? I think next uh, <laughs> speaker is coming. Thank you very much, Alisa.